Welcome to the farm. I'm Karcher Williams, the rural mum, and today we're joined by Courtney and Thea Turl here on their lease block in Dubbo, New South Wales. And today we're asking questions. You've married the farmer, now what? <laughs> so welcome Courtney. Thanks Karl. <laughs> so can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and then how you managed to be down here near Dubbo? Yeah, cool, excellent. So. Um, I am originally from Western Queensland, so three hours southwest of Longreach, um, my parents have a property out there. So uh, when I was growing up we were uh, predominantly sheep focused, um, but uh, now we run an organic beef operation. Um, so mum and dad are still out there. Uh, growing up as a kid was just uh, kind of ultimate freedom as much as I can remember. We had, uh, we had no idea what the city was, we, hadn't, we were just kind of living in the middle of nowhere yeah. and, and loving that. So um, yeah, so um, that was, yeah, it was really fun. I've got really great fond memories um, of being involved in the farming business from when I could remember. I, um, Dad used to do all of our flying, so he's um, a pilot and would do all of our flying for our mustering and stuff and as kids he would put our little motorbikes in the back of his plane and fly us out the back of our property uh, and drop us out on a clay pan and um, we would just follow uh, sheep all day yeah. and uh, Dad would fly and bring in more and yeah, so it was a very, um, I had a very uh, blessed upbringing. Um, so yeah, yeah, no, it was great. It's, uh, I love that part of the world. It, it gets in your blood and in your veins, and um, very, uh, very much love that part of the world. Um, so because we lived in the middle of nowhere, I did school of the air from uh, up until the start of grade six. So mum was our teacher, yep. um, which I appreciate how hard that would have been. Now I have kids of my own, like trying to teach your own kids and live three hours from the nearest town uh, whilst you're doing uh, all while you're cooking for men and helping in the family business and doing the books and all that kind of stuff just wearing so many different hats it would have been I don't know how but I don't know how those women do it out there to be honest and I grew up out there um, so I definitely appreciate the uh, the, the hardship that mum went through that we never realized as kids um, and yes, yeah, so she was our teacher. She taught us until uh, the end of year five. So we did school through School of the Air in Longreach. Um, and we used to try and get all of our school work done really early in the morning and then we could go with dad. And I remember in shearing once I said to mum, if I got up really early and I did my day's school work, could I go with dad? So I, he, she said yes. So I got up at like four in the morning and did all of my schoolwork and was done by like six or seven and said okay I'm going now and so uh. mum let me go and the next day I thought I've, like, I've sorted this school out like if I just get up and get it done and next morning got up got it done said mum I'm going with dad and she said oh but how about you just do another day and then you can go and then I was like bugger that like I don't <laughs> want to do two days of school two days of school. so um yeah so no that plan quickly failed um but we were lucky like the flexibility of um of our um upbringing was great it means that it meant that during shearing and during busy times we could just go and help dad and yeah. we would just catch up on school the next week yeah and that was so there was mum dad yourself yeah, so there's, uh, yeah, mum, dad, and there's four of us kids. So I have an older sister, yep. uh, a younger sister, and a younger brother. Beautiful. So, yeah, mum did the equivalent of uh, 20 years teaching without a degree, which, which <laughs> again, I think is crazy. Um, and then in year six, we went to boarding school. So um, we, yeah, went down to Toowoomba, which was 12 hours from home. Bit of a shock for a little country kid going to the big smoke of Toowoomba uh, to, to not only do school in an actual classroom um, to living with all these different kids from all over the place it was a big shock and I really battled with homesickness for uh, like the first few terms and probably battled with it like every obviously like any kid every time you leave home you struggle a bit so it's probably been um, 
yeah, something I've always been a bit of a homebody, so change isn't really. I'm, I'm not someone that goes, yay, yeah. I'm gonna go on an adventure. I'm kind of <laughs> like, mm. um, what do you think helped best with the homesickness? What eventually uh, yeah, sort of school, made yeah. it easier? Sport, sport, yeah, yeah. We, um, we definitely threw ourselves into sport yep. at boarding school, and yeah, and that was probably where we found our feet, all of us. Yeah. Um, my sisters and I threw ourselves into pot, uh, into netball pretty heavily. Um, my brother was a rower, um, and so that that kept us on the straight and narrow. And it also kind of I think kept yeah. us out of trouble in year eleven and twelve when your mates are going out partying and yep. we would say, oh no, sorry, we've got to get up at six the next morning to go to a netball carnival on a Sunday. Like, yeah. Um, so that yeah, I think sport really helped us and gave us so many great friends. Um, so yeah, did the whole boarding school thing. And then uh, after I finished year 12, I went um, I went home for a year, did a gap year um, at home, which was great. It was, um, yeah, it was the first time I'd been kind of at home for longer than a school holiday since I was about 10. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was great to go home and help mum and dad and um, have a bit of time out, I think, from study. And I, when I left school, I got accepted to do a dual degree of nursing and paramedics and then kind of halfway through my year off went, mm, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, so decided to do ag instead and uh, yeah, ended up in Armidale, three years uni in Armidale where I met my farmer. So um, <laughs> through a uh, yeah crazy turn of events, we're at the same function together and um, so we met in 2013 and uh, yeah, it's nearly been 10 years. Was Tom going to Armadale Uni <laughs> at the time or he just happened to be there? <laughs> no, no, uh, he was just going for a party. Going for so a party. yeah, yeah, we ended up, um, yeah, on, we are at a function and we ended up on the table right next to the bar of everyone who couldn't get themselves organised enough to actually get enough people on a table. So it was just this rejects table of people out the back <laughs> and uh yeah near the bar and so yeah twist of fate that's uh yeah and a few um a few recommendations from some good friends and um yeah i knew he was a pretty decent guy so beautiful yeah and tom's from dubbo new south wales yeah. so he's ultimately how you got to this end of the world yeah yeah so we did um we did long distance for three years, so I was working in Queensland in beef feedlotting for um, a couple of years and then went home again and helped mum and dad during a, um, one of their bad droughts um, in 2015 and then moved down here, it was probably after three years of long distance, we went right over, well, let's make an actual goal of it, there's, a, there's plenty of... Um, yeah, so there was plenty of times on long drives to decide whether we actually wanted to be together or not. <laughs> uh, and we decided that we'd uh, give it a crack. So we moved down in 2016 yep. um, and took up a role um, at uh, as a grain trader. And I'd never done grain before, so that was uh, like that was amazing. I'd yeah, I had no idea about the whole world of cropping because yeah. I was a fast grazier from Queensland. So uh, seeing cropping was pretty cool and working out the ins and outs of kind of the logistics and international markets, that was fun. Um, and then I got, uh, yeah, I heard about a job um, which is now my current job. I'm on maternity leave at the moment with my second, but um, so I work for Nutrient Ag Solutions as an animal production specialist. So my role is um, predominantly on farm with producers and uh, helping with animal health and nutrition mm -hmm. um, and yeah just trying to um, help producers get the most out of their businesses um, from yeah livestock health and nutrition Beautiful. yeah so what you did you and Tom end up uh, tying the knot and then what did yeah. you said your mum of two now yeah and is here with us on the floor so um, tell me a bit about your family structure now and and what, what are the plans going forward? Um, so yeah, cool. Tom and I were married in 2019. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we had our first, our first girl in uh, 2020. She was a COVID baby. Um, and yeah, so she was a 2020 baby. And then we have a second little girl, Thea. Um, and we are here at the moment on 
on our lease property. So um, we lease just under a thousand acres, um, yeah, south of Dubbo. Uh, Tom works full time on his family property, which um, is only about 10 k's down the road. Um, and yeah, we lease this, uh, Tom and I, as our little kind of outlet. Um, and yeah, it's fun, it's great. It gives us a little, um, yeah, a lot of freedom in, in what we do in our decision making, and we get to play around and yeah it's fun That's it's fun good. and you're saying that you manage it mostly on afternoons and on weekends and yeah. then what are you running here at the moment yeah so we're um we're the definition of weekend warriors a lot of the time so we um we do a lot of uh after work stuff um it's only it takes me 11 minutes to get here so uh i we normally come down after work do lick runs that kind of stuff um, and then weekends. So um, if there's anything to do um, kind of between nine to five jobs like uh, auctions plus assessing or visits with the agro and that kind of stuff, the girls and I do that. Um, and we're fortunate that um, Tom's parents, like if there's something on, they say, he, yeah, he comes down and helps during work hours um, if we need a hand. But most of the stuff the girls and I can kind of handle. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's how we roll. And running sheep and cattle at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started um, when we started, we didn't have a lot of finance. So we were buying uh, like it was raining. Was, we took over um, the lease in May 2021. Um, so we're fortunate. It's been raining really since we took it over. So. Um, we started off to try and keep on top of the feed that we had. We were buying things that were cheap so we could buy enough numbers, essentially. And we we worked out that that probably wasn't the best move for us. Hey, yeah. And so we, um, and we were doing a lot of sheep. Um, and hey, um, yeah, so we were running a lot of sheep and, um, Infrastructure wise, we don't have a shearing shed, which made it a bit tricky. We were very fortunate that our neighbor let us borrow his shearing shed. And um, so we kind of decided, made a bit of a decision that we'd go cattle. It's a lot less labor intensive. It's um, easier for us to manage when we're um, just doing weekends and um, after work. So uh, yeah, we've, we've only got a handful of sheep on at the moment, um, but running predominantly cows and calves. Uh, and joining some heifers at the moment. So, um, yeah, yeah, and we've been able to kind of trade our way into some good quality stock. So, yeah, we're excited with where we're at at the moment and we're really happy with how our stock are looking and how they're handling, um, yeah, handling current season. Courtney, what did you find was the biggest surprise or hurdle when you took on the lease plot? Um, probably a really positive surprise for us was um, how encouraging our little local community was. Like everyone, everyone was um, always asking us about how we're going and what we're running and showing a really genuine interest in what we're trying to do. They're really positive, which is, um, yeah, it was, it's, a, yeah, it's great. Cause I feel like when we took it on, we were like, oh, what are we doing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's been super, um, super positive, really happy to um, kind of help and, a good sounding board if we want to bounce ideas. Um, we've been able to grow our little network of people um, that we can ask questions to um, and just pick their brains really on business. Like there's some really amazing um, ag businesses locally that we can really draw some inspiration from. So it's been fun. It's been fun um, implementing kind of ideas and going, oh, that worked or oh, that didn't work. Yeah. And learning from the things that didn't work so putting together some um some little policies that like so one of our um trading policies is we don't like to have sheep over summer traditionally it doesn't really fit the grass that we grow so we try and stick with cattle trades over summer um stay out of the um the fly wave and the worm burden and um yeah so we're we're lucky that our business has that flexibility that we can trade in and out of different classes of stock um, to suit what feed we're growing and um, 
the situation that we've been uh, dealt with. So, yeah, that's that's been um, that's been fun. It's been yeah, a good surprise just how positive people are. Which, yeah, which is nice. Yeah. And since having the girls and still trying to manage the block um, and work and everything else, what sort of things have you adapted or learnt or top tips that you have uh, now that the girls are here with you? Yeah, cool, top tips. Mum hacks, dad hacks, I'm yeah. all about hacks. Um, the greatest thing we did was buy a buggy. Yep. Um, buggy has given me so much freedom. Like I think coming from a... Um, a background that I was I've always been really involved with the day-to-day -day on the farm stuff um, so um, I am by no means a domestic goddess I hate housework and I like I just I try to play to my strengths and my strengths are outside so the buggy gives me the autonomy to do that um, I'm as hundred percent effective in the buggy as with the two girls than someone is in the buggy by themselves yeah. um so that gives me a lot of freedom um we can do lick runs and um get sheep in and all that kind of stuff um it's really handy around nap time um yes. throw them in there in their seats and they can have a sleep some of the best sleeps my kids have are in the buggy or in the tractor um so yeah top tip buy yourself a buggy it's been yeah it's been a game changer for us um other top tips are uh, things that keep the kids entertained um, and out of the way, like swings in the cattle yards. Kids love swings, keeps them up out of the dirt. The reason that we actually started was because um, when, yeah, not long after we'd taken on the block, we were doing some um, reconfiguring of the cattle yards and um, our oldest Quinn had been playing around in the dirt for ages and I'd only just picked her up and um, I turned around and there was like a big brown snake just slithering straight past and like <laughs> snakes are my phobia. I think just as a kid we were told that if we get bitten we're going to die. Yeah. So now I see one and I'm like that's me done. So um, the swing is great, keeps them up off the ground out of the snakes. <laughs> they have a great time swinging there and they're happy there for ages. Um, so yeah, swings in cattle yards, sheep yards. Um, just obviously, if your husband says something's going to take 10 minutes, pack nappies and a water bottle and some snacks because it'll be eight hours. Absolutely uh, snacks. I'm all about <laughs> snack stashes. Like a packet of arrowroot biscuits in a glove box can be a lifesaver. Yep. Um, my toolbox on the front of my quad is pretty much full of snacks. So. Oh, and <laughs> snacks for the kids, but far out. The amount of times I've demol demolished a packet of tiny teddies that yep. have been sitting in the glove box for God knows how long, like is, they've been a lifesaver for me. Yeah, excellent. Well, there's some pretty good tips and tricks. I haven't heard about the swings in the in the yards before, but I absolutely love it. I might have to go home and mention that to Ned. Bunnings. <laughs> bunnings. Hit, up, hit up Bunnings. <laughs> yeah. Most of our hacks come from Bunnings. From bunnings. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. So we were talking earlier off camera about your five most important lessons you've learned while being here. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, five most important lessons. I think having the least block, but also having the least block with kids, obviously, because we, 99% of the time we have the kids, the other 1%, we're lucky to have a grandma just down the road, yeah. so we palm them off. Um, but probably one of my favourite quotes is, hard doesn't equal bad. Yep. Like we've had some days where we've done 11 or 12 hour days in the sheep yards with the girls, and they have been really hard days, but they haven't been bad days. Yep. They've, they've been really constructive days. We've got a lot done. Yeah, there's challenges, but um, hard doesn't equal um, kids are super resilient. Um, they are so resilient. They are. They they think playing in the trough in the sheep yards is just the best thing ever. Um, so yeah, um, that was probably one of them. And yeah, probably in those moments when it's really hard, just reminding yourself that hard isn't bad. Um, and then dirt washes off. Like my kids. Oh my lord, my washing pile. Again, not a domestic goddess. If I ever find the end of that, it'll it will be a miracle. Um, but yeah, just just let them get dirty. Yep. Like they they enjoy it. They entertain themselves. They're happy jumping in muddy puddles. Um, let them do it. Um, what else?
else did I have? Um, they're as young as they're ever going to be, which I think is a really good reminder. We're so lucky that this this lease block is our side hustle essentially, um, but we're in an industry where we can actually take our kids to work, which is so cool because um, we get to see them growing up um, and enjoy them growing up and yeah, they get to be involved in our business from day one. So I think, um, yeah, while there is challenges, we're so fortunate that we get to, yeah, to be able to take them to work. You can get everything done. You just have to work out what that everything is. So prioritizing uh, is obviously very important and you probably naturally do it when you have kids anyway. Um, you become a lot more effective with your time, I think, when you have kids because you have a lot less of it. But um, yeah, I think prioritizing what's important and yeah, again, just not not doing the stuff that you don't have to. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, I think that's an Im an important one. Um, another one is I think the old sunshine and water rule. Like if you've got ratty kids. Uh, in the sheep yards or at home just so the sunshine and water go outside or drop the trough and let them jump in a muddy puddle like it's a good reset for them we're lucky um, on the lease block we have a beautiful little creek that runs through so a lot of our lunch times um, if we're down here doing jobs we go down to the creek at lunch and the kids have a swim and it's a good little reset they feel better they're yeah it's, nice um, and refreshed they've cooled down yeah they've cooled down um yeah and that's that's always a good one yeah, and I think the other one is Wheat Bix can be dinner. Like, I think Mum Guild is a real thing, and we always feel bad about them not getting their five serves of veggies and whatever else. But at the end of the day, like, they can have Wheat Bix for dinner. Yeah. Like, it's part of least resistance at times. Like, if you've been outside all day, um, yeah, just yeah, don't. No. Anything that's portable. Yep. Yep. Arrowroot biscuits. Tiny teddies, yeah. jazz. Yeah. Catch up on the veggies and the meat and other. Yeah, that. that's exactly right. Like they're all important, but uh, yeah, on yeah, don't make another job for yourself trying to make a gourmet meal. Let, let's be honest, your kids probably aren't going to eat anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, a cold sausage or a whole <laughs> Weebix uh, does just the job. Yeah. Um, the thing that I struggle with with having kids and being on farm was I'm so used to being outside and. And capable and competent at doing everything outside and then when you have kids you're like oh, like how do I approach this yep. and I think I realized early on with my first the more that I do the more I realize I can do like yep. the first lick run you do with a baby you're like oh this is gonna be impossible how am I gonna handle it and then you do it and you're like actually that wasn't too bad yep. like maybe tomorrow I might do another paddock yep. or um, it's not yeah, the more you do, the more you realise you can do, I think. And One yeah. step at a time. Yeah, that's it. That's it. One step at a time. And, um, yeah, I think I found it way more daunting going and buying groceries for the first time with a kid than, yep. I, <laughs> than I did doing a lick run because <laughs> lick run is my strength. That's what I know. That's yes. what's easy. And probably not overthink it. Like, the, yeah, when Tom comes home and he goes, oh, do you want to go check a mob of sheep? Just say yes and work out, just grab a water bottle, snacks and some nappies and, and get in the buggy or get in the ute and go because I feel like you can overthink it and go, oh, so-and-so is due for a nap, I've got to do this washing, I've got to do that. And, um, and the day we're happiest and, outside. Yeah, that's we? it. And, and I think that's, it's, it's way more important for my mental health that I get outside, um, that I get outside and get some sunshine then I feel so much better for doing that than I do having a clean washing basket full of like full of clothes. I'd much rather get out and look at some stock and make some decision plans. Still feel connected. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Still feel like you've got a job. Um, I think Beautiful. So little Thea's had a nap. We've gone for a drive back down to the shed and we'll finish off our chat here. So we were about to start talking about our drought tips. So during the drought, you were with, Ag yeah. with Nutrient Ag Solutions. So tell us a little bit about your perspective of the drought from there, what you learned and your top tips. Yeah, so um, during the drought, I was doing uh, a lot of animal nutrition stuff. 
Um, and a common theme that kept coming up with producers that were handling it well were they were making decisions regularly and they were making kind of small decisions regularly instead of a, a big one um, all of a sudden. So, um, yeah, people that were handling it well knew what mobs were being sold next if if that if it didn't rain um they knew what date they they'd set themselves a time frame and knew that if it hadn't rained by a certain date that that mob was going um so i suppose uh having a plan and making a lot of little decisions um and and not um yeah not kicking the can down the road because then you end up with a really big decision to make and it can be a lot harder. So, um, yeah, that's what I, I found. Yep. Um, producers that were handling it well. Um, and then I suppose from a, from a personal point of view, um, we've been through a lot of droughts in, at home in Western Queensland, it's quite common for us. Um, and something that mum was always really adamant about, and we're very lucky that we're on a permanent water source, was she just always tried to keep the garden green. So it's like you're coming home to a little oasis. Yeah. Um, and yeah, even though you've been dealing with drought all day, at least you come home to some green grass, which I know is challenging in a lot of different um, spots with people that aren't on permanent water. And um, yeah, obviously sometimes the garden is the first to go, but. I think just having somewhere that's a bit green um, always helps. Yeah. It's good for the mental health a bit. And even if yeah. it's the patch underneath the clothes that's, line, yeah. so if you accidentally drop something at the end of the day, it's not the straw. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Very true. Yes. Thank you, Courtney and Thea, for coming on today and talking to us a little bit about um, marrying a farmer, even though we spoke about, you know, you having that farming background and, and hit label as well. So thank you for coming on, having a chat with us. Thea, thank you very much for joining us. We enjoyed your company too. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks yeah. very much. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's been lovely chatting and I look forward to seeing some more episodes from, from some, um, yeah, some people, exciting guests that you have coming up. Beautiful. Thank Thanks, you. Guys. No worries. Oh, bye. We'll talk to everyone again soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.